Welcome everybody to uh, our today's um, what's new webinar for SAP Customer Checkout 2.0 Feature Pack 19 and 20. Uh, yeah, we are happy that you all joined from uh, different countries all over the world. And um, yeah, so before we hand over to the agenda, um, so I'm Elena Wawitza. Today here in the room, we have uh, Harald Tebbe, our product manager from Customer Checkout, and Martin Gatzemeyer, one of our product owners. And yeah, some uh, organizational information before we start. Um, we will record this meeting as always. And we use today Teams, so you have a Q&A uh, box in the overview where you can raise your uh, questions that, ca that come up. We will collect them and at the end go through the questions. And we have deactivated the chat functionality and also have unmute you all so that we don't confuse in between. And yeah, feel free to open your camera. I see some of you have already shared the, the video. And also feel free to uh, yeah, uh, post the, um, some reactions if you like or don't like. Um, yeah, and with this, um, let's start to the, uh, with the agenda. So uh, what we have prepared today, we will show you the new features in, from Feature Pack 19 and 20. So Harald will start uh, sh sharing uh, the new functionalities for emails, for quick selections, usability improvements, uh, and also our new uh, customer display plugin. Then Martin will continue with the features for archiving and deletion of data, the gift cards uh, improvements, and the new gift card configuration, and also the sales reports. Then we will continue with the roadmap for Feature Pack 21, which will come in uh, Q4 this year. And last, we will uh, inform you about the upcoming training that we have planned for uh, Dubai in November. And last, as always, the Q&A session. Um, yes, and for all who are completely new into this topic, don't know what customer checkout is, uh, so some first introduction words. So customer checkout is a point of sale system for uh, retail, sports, and entertainment and catering businesses. We have around uh, 830 customers in 55 countries. The software uh, consists of two components. We have uh, that you can see here on the left side, the customer checkout manager, which is the back office where you can maintain users, roles, um, quick selections. And on the right side, we have SAP customer checkout, which is the POS solution running in the store where cashiers are working with uh, and can integrate printers, barcode scanners, et cetera. And the solution provides a rich point of sale functionality. We have analytics. We also uh, support loyalty, gift cards, coupons, can be integrated with uh, several SAP ERP systems. We also have mobile order functionality. And yeah, so the two feature packs that we will now uh, go through uh, is 19 and 20. So 19 was delivered in March this year and feature pack 20 was just beginning of July. And with this, I hand over to Harald. So, first of all, thanks, Elena, and second, welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining this webinar. And yeah, as Elena mentioned, we will show you today the newest features that we delivered, not all, because all would not fit in one hour, but let's say um, some of the most important one. And as always, we will not only show PowerPoint, we will show and try to, to show everything in the real system. And be patient if something probably will not work, but um, I think it's important to not only show PowerPoint. So let's start with our improvements we did in the area of email management. So I switch now into the system. And yeah, first thing, just also for the people who have probably not so much experience with customer checkout, since um, some feature packs, we support to send out a receipt by email, so not only printing anymore, we support now the functionality when a customer is at the point of sales and he paid the bill, then either the, the email is connected already with the customer account, or we offer here the possibility to enter the email address, and then the email is sent out um, directly with a receipt, so you don't have to print anymore. Yeah, so that's more the background. And now we have done in this area of email delivery some improvements. Yeah? So we have here, now I switch to the SAP Customer Checkout Manager. So the back office who's responsible for all this um, yeah, management of back office things. 
and of course also email delivery. So here we have an app for email configuration and this app we extended by a local. And by the way, this was all the feedback we got from you after we introduced this new feature. You said, hey, we need a local so that uh, automatically the system is formatting the date format and also the number format in the according local. And here I have a screenshot. So um, on the left side, you see then when the English local is used. On the right side, you see the German local. And then automatically the date format is formatted without doing anything and changing anything in the in the templates. Yeah, this happens all automatically. So that's one of the first things that we improved here in the email management. So the second thing that we improved, by the way, also based on feedback from you, um, we introduced in all our email templates that we offer a send test email button. Yeah, this was not there until now. And then, you know, when you change these templates and adapt something, it was quite hard to test if it works or not. And now, as I said, we introduce now this send test email button. So you can then just enter the email address. Yeah, and before you ha really had to execute the, the real business process. Yeah, now you can just enter this, send it out, and then it takes some seconds and you will get so you will get such a um, email yeah, with this test receipt. And then you can check if the changes you have done uh, in the customer checkout manager are successful. Yeah, and if it really looks as you expected. it. So that's the second thing. The third thing that we have done is in the email outbox. Yeah, then you see all the emails that we have sent out. Until now, it was not possible to see the attachments. So, for example, if a customer called you and said, hey, now I got you the receipt by email, but there's something wrong in the receipt, then you have not been able to really check that. Now we extended this with a tab for attachments. And uh, the attachment, obviously, you can download and you can open it then. And then you can see how it looks like and you can verify if everything was fine or if the customer is correct. So that are the main topics in the area of email management. So next topic where we did several improvements is in the area of quick selection management. So let me shortly switch to quick selection management. Yeah, so first thing that we have done there, we offer now the possibility to add a unit of measure for a quick selection button that was not possible until now. And I make a small example that I hope it is better understandable. I have here now a bottle of water. Yeah? So sparkling water, the unit of me me measure is each. Yeah? So this is the default unit of measure. And further, we don't only sell in bottles, we also sell in cases. So one case consists out of 24 bottles. And that is then an alternative unit of measure. And now it was a challenge when you go to quick selection and you wanted to place a quick selection button for the non-default unit of measure. This was not possible until now. And this is a functionality that we um, introduced now in the quick selection area. So let me jump um, into quick selection management and show this to you. Um, I think this is the quick selection that I used. And here I um, created um, a, two quick selection buttons, one sparkling water 24. This is the case. And when we go now into the items, then you see there's a new field unit of measure. And here you can then define in which unit of measure this article will be sold. Yeah? And here we have case. And then I have the other one. This is the bottle. And here you can see the unit of measure is each. And when I go back now to customer checkout, so I can place this quick selection buttons there. And now I sell it in each. And now I sell it in the unit of measure case. Good. Then um, we also introduced a new component for customer checkout, a so-called text component. And um, you can see now in this configuration, 
Let me, let me do one thing. You can see um, two text components. Yeah. On the one side, you can see here where the receipt ID is. This is a text component. Before this was hard coded. Now it's a component and you can configure it and change it. And here you can also see a text component. This is a, a manual one which I created for this webinar. And I just also show you how this can look like. You see now I created a receipt and now this text component shows you static text. For example, receipt ID is a static text and dynamically it binds the variable of the receipt. So the receipt ID into this text component. And here the same in this example of a text component, I have static text and I combined it with a Boolean parameter if this article is discountable or not. Yeah? So for example, when I click now here on the first article, then you see this article is not discountable and the second one is discountable. The third is not discountable. And that's what we call text component. And now I show you how you can work with that and how you can configure that. So here in the quick selection area, we have a tab components. And here you can now create new components of type text before only we supported receipt. And this is exactly the one. You know, I, I don't create a new one. I show you the one which I created up front. So here you can create such a text component. You can enter static text and you can combine it with parameters of the received sales item and user. Yeah. And here we also offer um, a placeholder UI so that you can see which parameters we all offer. Then you can check, hey, which parameter I want to show. You can copy it, you can uh, paste it into the text, and then you can create such a text component. So that's the first thing. Now, we, when we have such a text component, we somehow have to assign it to a quick selection. And this you will do in the quick selection um, directly. And now what is also new, we have here an assignment tab that was also not there before for the receipt component. Now in the assignment tab, you can see in which quick selections this um, component is used. Yeah? And in my case, it's used in this fashion retail, which uh, I, I just showed you. And now I can click on it. Yeah? And now you can see on the right side, on the preview, that here I place this text component here. Yeah? And it behaves in the end like an article or a function. You just select it. it's a component, and then you select the component that you want to show there. Yeah? So that's all about these text components. Good. Also, a small improvement that we did for the retail mode. Yeah, you know we have here this quick selection overlay. Yeah, what that, what you can see here. And until now, it was only possible with this um, small. A feature here to hide and unhide it. And uh, we extended now the quick selection preview here that you can directly do it. Yeah, you can directly click on the quick selection button and then it's shown. And when you click somewhere else, it's hidden again. Okay, that's all what I wanted to show about quick selection. I want to remind you if you have questions or something is unclear, then please use the QA tab of Teams and enter your questions there. Now I move on with some improvements that we have done in the customer checkout user interface. So the first thing, and I think the most prominent thing, and a lot of customers and partners ask us since years for that, we show now a scan field. Yeah? So we have not done that before. Before, um, this was just in a black color. So you did not see when you scan something or enter something in the keyboard that this is the area where it will be entered. Yeah? And that is feedback we got from you. You said, hey, other point of sale systems offer that. You not, why not? Now we offer it. And when you scan something or when you enter something, then you immediately see this is the scan field. Yeah? So that's the first thing. The second thing is in the past, as this was no real input field, we reused this area to show error messages. Now we adapted our way how we show error messages by toast notifications. So if I enter something what is wrong, then you see we show a toast notification, um, which is displayed for a certain period of time. You can also just click.
click it away, and then it is gone. Yeah, so a new way how we show errors. Then the third thing is we have now also a notification area. Yeah, so in this notification area, all the errors, warnings, information messages are stored. Yeah, it is implemented in a, in a way that it cannot overflow. We will not store more than 200 entry, entries. And after a certain period of time, um, this will also be cleared. You can then also filter if you say, hey, I want to see all info messages, all warnings, all error messages. That's also possible. Okay, then another important topic, also, by the way, based on customer feedback, especially out of the S4 and ECC area, we introduced a scanned ID. Yeah, the scanned ID, which is now shown in my user interface, is not there by default. If you want it, you have to configure it. I shortly explain what is a scanned ID. I explain it uh, best by showing an article. So the article 1000 has several barcodes or IDs. Yeah? So the first one is 1000, the second one is 2000, and then we have even a third one in the barcode list with 3000. Yeah? And when you go now in customer checkout, you can scan 1000, you, scan, you can scan 2000, you can scan 3000. And the article ID is always the same. And until now, we only stored the article ID and we're only able to send this article ID to the S4 system. Now customers complained and said, hey, in the S4 system, it can make a difference if the cashier scanned 1,000 or 3,000. Yeah, that's a difference. And that's why we introduced the scanned ID. Yeah? Um, it is stored now also on the database and it is forwarded accordingly to the ECC system. Yeah? So when you scan with 3,000, we don't send 1,000 to the S4 system, we send 3,000. Um, good, that's one thing. Then another thing is we introduced a discount search UI. This discount search UI was available in our old, old user interface, but here in this new user interface, which we have already since really a long time, this was a gap, this was missing. And I shortly explain you how it looks like. So as an example, now I have this article 1000 and it has three euro discount. Yeah? And you don't know, hey, from where is it coming? Now you have the chance to click here on discount and then you get here discount search and then you can see all the discounts that are maintained in customer checkout. And here you see, for example, for the article 1000, there's a 10% discount. Good. Then uh, another topic where we have um, closed a functional gap is we have now the possibility to show loyalty information about a customer or loyalty, a customer with a loyalty program directly at the point of sales. So we offer a new function, display loyalty information. When I click on it, it opens the loyalty account. So I can see the account types, the customer is enrolled. I can see the tier of the customer. So in this default program, he has a gold tier and he has more than 4,000 points. I can also see the loyalty history and I can see which, which coupons are assigned to this loyalty account. And I can also directly add it to the receipt. Yeah. So, and now you can see this coupon was added to the receipt. Then for our restaurant uh, customers, we did a small improvement also by the way, based on feedback to search a receipt based on the table number. Yeah, Because when you are in the restaurant, you know, then nobody cares about the receipt ID. The people only talk about, hey, I was sitting at table 10 or at table 33. And then it was not possible until now to search receipts with a table number. Now it is possible if a customer complains, hey, I was sitting at table 33, something is wrong on my receipt. Then you can enter the table ID. You see also in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the list, you see the table ID, and then you can find it more easily. So that's all that I wanted to show in the customer checkout user interface. Now let's go back in the customer into the customer checkout manager. Also here we have done some optimizations. The first one is in the price list. 
and search for the prices. Yeah, so we offer here a new button to copy a price list was not there. And just to explain the intention behind it. So if you have a customer who's maintaining all its, its prices and articles via customer checkout manager, and they wanted to change a price list. So for example, 1st of Jan 2025, the prices are increased. Then it was really hard. They had to create a new price list at all the thousands of articles into this new prices. So it was a lot of manual effort. Now you can just copy it. You can enter a new ID, a new description, and you can define from, valid, from when it shall be valid. And then, you know, we also have jobs to increase prices, for example, by 10% and things like that, or decrease. And this can then be done on this new price list with really minimum effort. Um, then another topic where we improved um, the usability is in the communication arrangement area. By the way, again, based on feedback um, and also support tickets that we got. So for our SOAP messages, like the financial transaction or the sales transaction, we offer here a link to download the whistle, the schema document of the service. Yeah, And this, yeah, you just can click on it and then you can download it and then you have access to the schema document. And we have done this uh, for the outbound services, for the SOAP-based outbound services and for the SOAP-based inbound services. And also for our generic APIs here for the received um, um, object, we also offer the XSD, so the schema document for the REST service. And with that, I'm more or less done with all the usability improvements that we did. And I come to the last topic. And for that, I have to go back into the slide deck. Um, this is um, our new customer display that we offer. And I, I don't know if all of you have recognized it, but um, I think with feature pack 19, we delivered the first version with feature pack 20, we did additional improvements and more will come. And I just present what we have there. So first of all, to explain why have we developed a new customer display? So in the end, the, the, the reason is quite easy. We had this, what I call now old customer display. This was, I don't know, since the beginning of customer checkout. And it has a lot of, um, first of all, functional restrictions, but also technical restrictions. So um, first thing it was developed on this old Java Swing UI stack. Um, where we said, hey, this is not the technology where we want to continue to invest into it. And uh, second of all, yeah, it had a lot of functional restrictions. It was only able to show, for example, monospace fonts. Then it was only able to show uh, here two lines and not more. You, you've been able to only see one article and I think the sum. And yeah, and also here in the area of uh, where we show this slideshow, it was hard to show a logo and things like that. And now what we did, and I think this is the most important thing, we moved this onto a new technology stack uh, in a similar technology stack as our customer checkout user interfaces, web UI based on Angular. And with that, we have a basis where we can further invest into it. So the second, of course, we already introduced in these first uh, versions, uh, a lot of functionality, which we, we've gotten as feedback from our customers. So for example, to show not only two articles, but more then to be able to show a logo, to show a background, to configure the text color. Um, yeah, and I think much more. And also we support now a theming. So you can have different themes and you can just link it to a new theme. So, now let's jump again into the system and look how you can use it. So first of all, let me answer this receipt. Yeah, so we deliver that plugin with customer checkout and it's also automatically deployed. Yeah, so you don't have to copy something from A to B. The deployment happens automatically. When you install now customer checkout, you, will, you should see in the plugin section this customer display plugin. Now to activate it, I can just start the plugin. And now let's hope that everything works. So I divide my screen now. I have a small screen here in this 
but I think it's it's fine. Okay, and now you can see the default customer display. Um, and this customer display has different, first of all, different pages. So let me just save that. And um, I want to log out so that you can see all the um, different things. So this page is the one we call it ID page. You can see here the logo which you have configured. You can see here the background paint, uh, image and you can see that the point of sale system is closed. Then when I log in, you can see the welcome screen. And when you scan then articles, then you can see here the list of articles and you can also do the payment. So let me do the payment and pay, let's say 250 euro, 250 euro. And then you can also see the digital receipt is it, if it is configured. Yeah. And what is also possible if a customer says, hey, send me an email, then you can click here uh, on send email and the customer will also see um, his email address and can verify that you entered without any typos the correct email address. So that's more or less high level what we support. And this is the default that we offer. Now let me go back into the configuration again, into plugins, and also switch here into the folder structure. So the experts of you should know that we place all the plugins of customer checkout in this post plugin AP folder. And there we will in future, or we do since feature pack 19, deploy this customer display plugin. And we offer three different themes. Uh, so we offer coffee house default and SAP now, and I show you how easy it is to switch. Yeah. Oh, I have no typo. What can you check? Oh, good. And then automatically you see there's a new one. Yeah. And this is also um, what you can do manually for this webinar. For example, I prepared a new theme. Yeah, unfortunately, still you have to do something in the file browser and with property files. But in a future release, we also plan to do everything with what you see is what you get editor. But yeah, we are not yet there. Will come. Yeah. So in this i18n, you have um, the the labels, yeah, which are shown. So the welcome message or the, the point of sale system is locked message. Then we have here in the theme area, you can uh, add a logo that you want to show. You can add background pictures yeah, for, the, um, for the sales um, screen, and you can add a slideshow for the idle screen. And then last but not least, we have here a few theme properties. And the theme properties are also mainly self-explaining. And as I said, unfortunately, you still have to edit this in uh, uh, editor and not with, with what you see is what you get editor, but that is on our roadmap to change this. And yeah, yesterday I spent probably uh, five to 10 minutes to prepare also a nice theme for this webinar. And I just changed this. And now you can also see that you can have here a slideshow. Yeah? You can combine it with videos. And the logo, as you can see, is always shown. And when you do scanning, then you can also have a video here. You can define the background color, the color of the font, and all this is quite flexible. And we think, yeah, it's a huge progress compared to the old user interface, uh, old customer display. Um, with that, my question, did I forget anything? No? Are we in time? Or? Mm -hmm. A little a bit, bit over, over, but okay. okay. So then, thank you, and I hand over to Martin. Okay, then let me share my screen. First of all, thanks, Howard. Very impressive, the line display. Very nice to see this. Um, more to come, don't forget. More to come, more to come. Um, for those who already 
uh, also joins the Feature Pack 18 What's New um, webinar. They remember the archiving where we um, forwarded receipts and sales summaries to an archive system. And um, we had some leftovers there that we um, closed with Feature Pack 19. And so there's still this archive service, outbound service. And in this um, outbound service, I configured the received and the sales summary. But let's imagine our archive system that's um, where we forwarded is not working in real time. It's not unusual. So the archive system is like taking this receipt that we forward and is, I don't know, taking two hours, putting it in the queue. And after two hours, it's um, archived. And then we um, would like to get a response. Um, and we will allow this now with an inbound service. So the archive system after two hours could give us the response of the white archive ID of the location, if it was successful or not, and can update um, the record that we have provided. And we will then um, um, take this update and consider it if we look into this um, archives app and in this archives app. Um, we would then update it. That's the documentation. Um, it's shown also in the Sega API. So you will find these things there. Furthermore, to um, round up our um, um, archiving and also cleaning up the system, um, we took the functionality that um, was in former times um, done in the lead outdated data plugin. So there was a special plugin for the point of sales system to um, delete outdated sales summaries or day and closings and receipts. Now we move the functionality and put it on our um, about tab. And here you find now a new setting called delete outdated data. And in this section, um, first of all, you are kind of reminded that um, deletion of data is kind of serious and you should be sure that um, um, data is archived. And then you could um, enter the number of days that is uh, relevant to delete. You can delete it one time, um, receipts that are older than 750 days, or um, what's also possible and also taken over from the plugin is that we provide here to schedule this and run this as a job. So, and with this, um, you could regularly clean your data depending on your payload. So there might be systems where you have to delete it after two weeks. There might be systems where you don't have to delete it all or there. And with the deletion of receipts, you can also increase the performance on high load systems. And as they are archived um, either in the manager or an archive system, um, you could do this also from the legal perspective. But make sure that in the country it's allowed and it's working in this way. This is the leftover from, um, I would say, uh, feature pack 18, where we worked on the archiving. And um, now coming to the um, points where we really um, did some new things, and this is in the area of gift card and gift card configuration um, for the for the gift card. Um, we um, did some uh, improvements for the configuration ID, this field. I will come later to this, what this is. First of all, I would like to start with a type code. So you see now we have three type codes in the gift card. One is standard gift card. The standard gift card is something that um, you usually would give a friend for his birthday or for Christmas or whatever. A pop-up card is the successor of something where we in former times had here a, a, a small um, Boolean flag is top-up enabled. And by the way, all these gift cards that were marked as top-up enabled are now top-up cards from the type code. And um, there's the last um, type, this is employee allowance. This is for the use case um, where maybe um, a company wants to give um, their employees um, um, some, some uh, money for their lunch. And um, you can also use then our um, target uh, amount job to um, upload daily some money to these um, special gift cards and to use them in their canteen. Um, the type code is not only a field here, it's more or less also um, reflected, and therefore I have to jump to the point of sales system. It's also reflected as a payment term. So the standard gift card will stay as the um, payment method gift card, the, um, and the new two um, um, type codes that we introduced also get two new payment type codes. So one is the employee allowance and the top-up card. You see this in the caching up. You will also see this in the day and closing. And you will also find 
the differentiation in the sales reports or on some of the sales reports. So it's now possible also to make these use cases really to see who was paying what and um, therefore was also the main reason why we um, introduced these things. But coming back to our um, gift cards that we create, um, besides the already known fields, we also introduced a Reddit form field. Um, so the issue date is not um, the date when, when it's valid form. So you can also um, give a different valid form date, but if this is not set, it will take the issue date like it was before. And there is a new flag called one-time usage. So we are now able to um, um, use a gift card only once, and after it is used, um, then we will block it. Um, also there, I will um, come a little bit later when the use case is, uh, for what use case this is um, done. So um, if you look at an existing gift card, you also see that the download token is now linked. And if you click on this link, you will see um, the possibility to open a link, to copy a link and to copy a text. This is um, a usability improvement, not like handmade this um, URL for your digital download page. You can now easily go there. You can click on um, the download button and um, the gift card is, is there. So it's an easy way to also share a gift card a link to this gift card. Uh, by the way, this is also um, this link is also reflected in the Excel file. If you generate um, gift cards with a job, then an Excel file was created. You also added the link there to also share these things. Um, then um, I have to go a little bit up. Um, there is a, a new tab. So beside the details and the transactions, we see a sales information tab. The sales information tab is yes, nothing in. And to show what's behind this, I have to use the gift card now and make some uh, small transaction. So I use it and I pay with this gift card. Okay, so the whole receipt was paid by the gift card. And if I look now into the uh, sales information, I really see what was bought with the gift card. So this is very important. You also see how much was paid, um, especially in the scenario, of, for example, of employee allowance and so on. If you like there's a third person in, um, one has to pay for the gift card, somebody is using it and somebody is delivering the service. So in these cases, and you want to maybe at the end of the month, you have to pay your canteen for the things that were bought by uh, or was consumed by your um, employees. Um, um, this information is very important. And also going in this direction, um, we have created new gift card reports that um, the first one um, show you all the receipts that have gift card involvement and that are separated by customers. So let me uh, just date a little bit back to also get some more content. Um, I have uh, there this, this um, report. And you see there are three tabs, and these are the customer numbers that I have. And here's something that has no customer. And the customer number is not where the um, receipt is attached to this customer. It's using the customer field of the gift card. And here you see how was um, the gift card used in such um, receipts. You see that some has 100%, some items no. And at the end, you will also um, get a detailed overview of the consumption. And the same um, happens also, and this is even for like if you um, if if um, your canteen wants to write a, an invoice to to the company, then also this one can be used. So um, you have the different um, customers. A customer in this case could be a company, assuming you have a restaurant and five companies around your restaurant send your employees to you then um, each company would get an own tab. And then based on this, you can then um, um, get the, really the amount that was only used by the gift card. And um, you also, this is grouped then by the article groups. And um, at the end, it's also um, grouped by the top level article groups. So soft drinks is part of drinks and it's also separated for the VAT, this allows um, um, this restaurant to also write a white invoice 
to the to the company because if they say I will get this and this money from you, you really have to specify um, in which tax rate um, the um, employees consume your products. So this is um, about gift card. Maybe one last small thing on the, uh, on the cost system for the gift card to have this there. Um, uh, we also have uh, now a search and we also have um, a detailed page now with this. This was not there. So now we see really also some gift card details um, behind the gift card in the search. The second part of the gift card, and this is also like Elena mentioned, we have now a new app. This is called gift card configuration. So the first question is, what is gift card configuration? Let's try to explain it a little bit. The gift card configuration is something, first of all, um, a template for new gift cards. So like I do it here, I could create a new um, gift card. What's new? FP20. Um, I can give this configuration a name. What's new? FP20. Um, and um, for all um, new gift cards that are based on this configuration, I can define the behavior. So like random with prefix, say, okay, they should start with webinar FP20, all these gift cards. I can write a description for all new generated gift cards. I can set an initial amount. Let's give 100 euro. I can define the validity period. And this is also something that's um, new. So we have now the possibility with this configuration to not have a hard-coded um, valid to date. There's a valid period, which can also allow us that a gift card is only valid for some days or weeks. And there's a flag for, um, I think people who are in Germany important, valid until the end of the year, this gift card. Meaning if you create a new gift card from this um, configuration, it will be like three years and then till the 31st of December. So if I would create it now, it will be valid till um, end of 2027. If I would uh, enter this, yeah, I could um, put some data in like the, um, on the customer. Let's, let's use a customer here and I could define some um, parameters as well. I can save this. And now with this configuration, as I said, the first part is somehow to have a kind of um, possibility to generate easily new gift cards. So if I want to generate from this configuration um, 10 new gift cards, um, it's not an issue at all. I click on um, generate, I click on um, refresh here and these gift cards are created. And the good thing is as well, we have now a new bracket around gift cards. So we can group them, these gift cards um, a little bit better and um, we can use them. It's also possible with this um, gift card configuration to create a gift card manually. So if I choose and now I come back to this configuration ID, if I say this what's new webinar, um, feature pack 20, I immediately see that all these values are pre-filled. And if I say no for this one, I don't want to have this customer. I really want to like this customer. It is also possible. I can change it. And now I have an, um, a new instance. If I go to the, back to the gift card configuration um, of um, this um, things, I already see that I have 11 instances. 10 was generated by this one and one was generated there. And of course, it's also possible to create to use this configuration ID via the API. So also with the API, you can use now the configuration um, to create gift cards. So it's also very easy then. Um, you don't have to repeat all the settings to, to create gift cards. Um, coming to, um, to um, the very interesting part of this gift card configuration, and this is then the, the third um, reason why we created this configuration, and the third reason why it's there. Um, we um, put rules and actions to these um, gift cards. So it's now possible to really um, have um, a set of, of um, um, rules to this gift card. Um, let's, let's start with it. Um, so we can check by article, article group, customer, customer group, day of the week, the payment amounts, a post system, post group, or the time of the day. So if I, for example, would only allow that um, this gift card should be only for Monday to Friday available. On Sunday, I don't like this gift card because 
um, as I said, this example with the employee allowance, um, your your gift card should not be possible to pay on um, um, Saturday on Sunday on the um, in, in between the week. It should be possible. Then I would create such a um, a filter could call it or and, and uh, define this this action. I have the possibility to either um, combine this with that I say, okay, I would also like to have it only uh, between a specific time, time of the day should be um, um, greater or equal um, 11. Um, then I could um, combine this um, and we see rule conditions groups are logically linked or and rule conditions is in a rule are logically linked in. So this one is an end condition. It must be on a um, Monday to Friday and must be after 11 p.m. If I would um, create a new group, for example, telling on Saturday on Sunday, Sunday, I don't want to have any time restriction. I could also do this if I would create a new group here and then we would have group two. These are the rule conditions. The rule actions um, to explain the why we need this, because we could also with the rule conditions filter for some articles or article groups. But if you want to restrict something, um, let's say you want to have um, um, a rule condition telling you you can only buy one water and you can only um, buy one burger with this gift card. Then I would do the following. I would say, okay, let's take one water. So here are two waters. I would um, um, let them um, select both. So they can either select um, this or this. And with the gift card, I would like to pay the most expensive one. And if I would also um, allow them to have out of the article group burger, one article, then um, we would um, do this in, in this way. And let's now take an instance of this gift card and let's check this out. So we have two water. We will also buy something else. Um, we will uh, buy also two burgers. And my expectation now would be that um, this gift card cannot be applied at all. This is not what I, <laughs> what the expectation is. Uh, let me check if I've done something wrong. Maybe here with the PM, yeah, it's after 11 PM. So good example. Um, after 11 p.m. we don't have, we remove this restriction and we try it again. And now let's see, yes, we can apply it, but we cannot pay everything with it. And it's um, completely clear that we cannot apply everything with it. We can also see this if we look into this um, instance that I took, the sales information, and I immediately see that only the big water and the the most expensive burger was bought with 100%. All the other things were not bought. And also, this is something that you can reflect then in the reporting. So reporting is the right word. It was really in a rush. You have to read it and you have to try this out more, more serious. This one is um, just a high-level overview of what's possible with gift card and gift card configuration. I will also jump now and make a short overview of the new sales report set we have. Um, time is kind of short. So um, we have a new report called VAT per day and group. But to show you this one, um, it shows you an, an VAT overview for all these selected days. And it shows you as well for each day. So you see, this is the first tab. has the overview of all the um, tax rates with all the um, um, figures that are there. And then for each day, it has a detailed um, um, overview for the post group that you have. So this is something and it's up to 50 days. There are also um, one new report for the cashier. It's the revenue per cashier and post system. It's differentiating for the post system. And also the revenue per cashier report was a little bit extended um, and showing the, the payment terms. Um, and one thing that um, also was um, for the most reports introduced is that we have now the possibility by default hiding the fees and service charges and um, some other fields. So fees and service charges is really used where. So, but if you use it, you have to click on it to see it. If you like deactivate it, you immediately see that these figures um, are more cleaner because um, most of the customers haven't used them. So we took this feedback. This is in the section of report, and let me finish um, 
um, two small um, minor improvements um, for the sales summary. We have now the possibility um, to also export this one to a PDF. So like you know it from, rece uh, from receipts. So also um, you can now visualize really um, your sales summary in a PDF. And last but not least, very important feature, if um, some financial authority asks you for an audit in Germany, then you have to provide um, the DSFINV car. And before we change this, you really had to go for each sales summary, exported it, could be really time consuming. So we decided to make a new job, and this job is called um, sales summary export. Right now, we only support the DSFINV car. Um, format, I can select uh, it. I can select the year 2024 and take January 1st, say it for, do it for all point of sales system and for all point of sales groups, we save it. And then in the execution, you have um, the DS Fin car once it is done for all the things. This is all from my side. Um, for the detailed information, I think um, Elena provided very nice what's new um, PowerPoints and PDFs that can be downloaded on our help portal. And then I would hand over back to Harald to um, finalize um, things with the roadmap. And so thanks, Martin. Thank you very much for this nice overview. And before I continue, I was also scanning a bit the questions. And one question I would immediately answer because it fits to, to the last topic I showed. This is the one from Maximilian Gregor. Is it possible to show discount on the customer display? And while Martin uh, was presenting, I just added some discounts to the sales items and to the receipt. And you can see we showed in here the percentage on item level and also on receipt level. Yeah, just to uh, shortly answer that. Good, then let's jump back to the agenda and uh, continue with what comes next. So before I come into the details of what comes next, one very, very important topic, which everybody of you should have in mind. That's why we highlighted uh, this much and also in, in the EKT document that we offered, we also highlighted this very prominent. This, the next feature pack, feature pack 21, only Java 17 will be supported. So Java 11 will not be supported anymore. And that's why we tell this already now to you. Yeah, Because you can already now update uh, your Java landscape to Java 17 or SAP Machine 17, because we already support this feature pack 20, 19, I think 18. I don't know exactly since when we support 17, but for sure with 19 with and 20. 16, I think with 16, 16 or 16. 15, 16. Yeah. So you can update already now to, to Submachine 17. It will work with the current feature packs and with feature pack 21. Java 11 will not be supported anymore. Yeah, that's why we tell this to you now already. Um, uh, the small rule? correction. We support yeah. it from feature pack 17 as mentioned in the slides, the first line. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So I should read the slide. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> because, yeah, but it's very important that you have this in mind. Background is we will update um, to Tomcat 10. So we will also then uh, support Tomcat 10 with the next feature pack and um, this Tomcat 10 things and restructuring of the Java packages ask for um, Java 17. Okay, good. So that's it from that side. Now, what comes next? Um, yeah, we first of all, we plan to deliver feature pack 21. It's already full in development uh, in Q3 2024. And um, I noted down here the short term topics where we are really currently working on uh, here in this key message. So the first thing is, um, uh, we did a recertification for our solution for France according to the NF525 standard, and that will soon come. Yeah, it will not only be valid, so it will also be valid for feature pack 20, 19, and 18. Yeah, exactly. so we expect it because certification has happened, yeah. and now we are just waiting for the response of the auditors. Then the next topic is we will uh, continue to do some extensions in the gift card management based on customers' feedback. 
to because we started now the topic uh, like uh, Martin nicely showed it and there's still some things to come and this we are working on. Mm -hmm. uh, further, also based on customer feedback, um, we plan to store the organization structure of a receipt when it was posted. Yeah. Today, we lose this information. So, for example, if you restructure your point of sale system, so you move one point of sale system from one store to another store, and you want to do reporting later on yeah, of a certain date in history, then it will sh not show the figures of how your point of sale setup was at this point of time. Yeah? And this is for some of our bigger customers a huge issue because they, they sometimes move point of sale system from one store to another. And yeah, this shall be solved. Then the next topic is um, we are already working on, on a new user interface, uh, an additional user interface for self-checkout scenarios. I just show you some previews. I mean, the intention of self-checkout, I think, is quite clear. The intention is that you have in your retail stores uh, a self-checkout station, which works without a cashier, and the, the, the customer himself will use this self-checkout functionality to scan the articles. And uh, we designed a complete new user interface. You can see it here on the right side. Yeah, So you have a welcome screen. Then you can scan your articles. There's also a catalog included or will be included where you can select them from a from a, um, a screen so a picture based catalog your items which are not scanned then it will also be integrated with our loyalty program and last but not least you can do the payment and um, it is also it will also be extensible so it's a, a extension concept is included so if a partner or a customer has the skills and wants to change something out of our standard, then this will also be possible. Um, yeah, as always, no commitment when it will be delivered. Yeah, you know, we, we work quite agile and when the release date, we check what is ready, what is not ready. If it is ready, we deliver it. If not, it comes with the next feature pack. Last and very important topic, is uh, I think all of you are aware that um, SAP as a company is committed to moving everything into the cloud and to be the cloud company for business applications. And um, that's, of course, also relevant for SAP customer checkout. That's why the decision has been taken by us and also um, SAP's upper management to move SAP customer checkout uh, into the cloud. And that's also what we are currently working on to offer SAP customer checkout as SAP cloud-based application uh, running in the business technology platform of SAP. Um, here, just that not too many questions will come. So the manager will move will be moved into the cloud. The point of sales piece will still stay on premise. Yeah, but it will be a, a completely new solution more or less same functionality and so on yeah but we will move it uh, into the cloud good um that's it from that side feature pack 22 is planned uh, somewhere in 2025 and from our long-term strategy in general nothing change um we will continuous uh, continuously improve our solution regarding performance security uh, robustness and, and of course, also legal changes. Then security and cloud, I think I also mentioned it's clear. Then integration into S4, especially S4 public cloud, to be part of grow, pro, uh, grow projects and rise projects becomes more and more important. And user experience, you see that in each and every release, we do improvements there. Self-checkout, I mentioned, um, mobile order and scan and go scenarios. Here we work more together with partners and then of course, also things like uh, discounting and integrating with other SAP products like OPPS and central management of configuration that are more the long-term topics. And by the way, they did not change so much um, since uh, some, some years. Good. With that, I hand over to Elena. And we're running out of time. So some uh, last words about uh, an upcoming training. So we decided to do uh, a training this year. It will be in uh, in Dubai. 
And the dates will be from November 25th to 28th, so four days packed with uh, a lot of content. So this training is supposed for the uh, consultants, for sales, pre-sales, so everybody who wants to sell, market, position, configure, but also implement customer checkout for uh, customers. Uh, it will be in Dubai in our SEP office, and um, it will be 1,500 euro per participant. And we will start now promoting this training. You can scan the QR code and register for the training. And yeah, if you have any questions, uh, come back to me or reach out to us. And yeah, we would be happy to see you in the training in Dubai this year. And now let's uh, continue with the questions. So um, I mean, we are running in general out of time, but at least V3 and Bcash, we don't have a follow-up meeting now, so we have blocked a bit more time, and we would continue with Q&A. And, &A. and uh, I mean, who has to leave, uh, of course, can I be. I think the recording is also available. The recording is there, yeah. so let's just continue. Yeah. So yeah. probably, um, yeah. yeah. I can go through the questions, so there are several. So the first question is, uh, how is your example for the text components configured? Uh, is it only possible when it, the items come from customer checkout manager? What about using uh, with SPO, using properties, how to synchronize them? Yeah, probably I can shortly answer that. I mean, this text component is completely independent of SAP Business One. You have only access on the data which is available inside customer checkout receipt, sales item, and, and user. And um, yeah, I hope this answers your question, but it's there's no syncing or anything between customer checkout and business one there. At least that's my knowledge, and I hope I understood your question well. Okay. Okay, the next question is, um, are there any key differentiating factors between customer checkout and uh, GK uh, point of sale mm -hmm. software? So... Um, so in the end, um, let me answer this in that way. Um, we don't know the GK software in detail. I mean, we had at some customers, we, we, yeah, we replaced GK. Um, but in the end, I would say the key differentiator is, so first of all, SAP customer checkout comes from SAP with SAP product standards, SAP quality, SAP commercial model for partners, for account executors, so this is one thing, of course. The second thing is the target customers of GK are more in the large, large enterprise area with, I don't know, 10,000 point of sales upwards. So customer checkout has a clear goal to be very scalable and also not only targeting um, large enterprise retailers. In general, customer checkout targets all customers, even non uh, retailers who need point of sales. And I can tell you even SAP here, uh, 20 meters uh, away from me, there's the SAP canteen and their customer checkout is running and SAP employees can buy food. Yeah, And uh, I think that's a key differentiator. We are focusing from customers who need one point of sales up to 2,000, 5,000. And GK is starting a bit later and has more the, the pure retailers in its focus. At, at least that's my understanding. Yeah, but I'm not an expert there. Yeah. Okay. So next question is about the scanned ID feature in combination with uh, Business One, if it's also working. I think uh, Bikash already. Yeah, um, it is. Uh, so I'm not, I was not 100 sure about B1. With S4, I'm 95% sure because there was also a question, but probably Bikash knows it. So we are storing it in customer checkout, transferring it to the manager and everything. We are not transferring this field to SAP Business One. We are not. We are not transferring it. It is only stored in customer checkout, customer checkout no. manager to business one AR invoice. It is not transferred. Yeah. So and regarding S4 and ECC, at least that's the information I got from the developers. It is different because also from that area, this request came. We will transfer in the article ID field um, this scanned ID. Yeah. Because there was also a question regarding yeah. that somewhere. Yeah, okay. Uh, question. Uh, another question about fiscalization and uh, TSA signature. Is the fiscalization and TSA signature included in the email, especially for RKSV uh, signature in Austria? So for TSE, I'm 
again, 95% sure that we attach, so not in 100%. And for us, we are... No. 100, are you 100%, 100% sure? sure? Yeah. Okay, for us, we are not, because this is implemented in a plug-in, whereas TSE is implemented as a core, bit, a core functionality, and yeah, that's how it is. But also in the attachment, okay. Yeah. In the printout? The, yeah, the printout, uh, that's the PDF, because this comes from the manager, and the manager doesn't okay. get this information. Okay, good. So uh, some questions about references, but Bikash already answered them. Uh, another question, can we configure the required I mean, scheme? Probably we can also answer that, Elena, in more detail, yeah? I mean, what I have done is I put you links of official references that we have, which is stored in our partner edge portal, but we also have a lot of indirect references, which happens through SAP News, so I put a link there, and a lot of videos created by SAP and also by partner, and I've also put all the links there. So if you look at all these four different channels, then you get a lot of references that we have. And because it fits to this question, I also saw that there was a question from somebody, do you have some, uh, some customer labels and so on? So in the end, to man I, I just took out this slide, so we have, I think we, we reach now 850 customers in, I think also 55, we are now nearly in 70 countries. I, I think I saw uh, customer bookings. And yeah, in the end, there's everything. So as I mentioned, we have customers with one point of sales, which are using customer checkout standalone, others together with Business One, others to, together with s hana public cloud, private cloud, with retail, with out retail, so more or less, yes. And also with customer activity repository, because I also saw their question. So for example, Agravis is using customer checkout with, with activity repository. Good, mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, yeah, another question. Can we configure the required fields in the secondary screen display? In the customer uh, display? Something can we configure the required fields nope. in the nope. secondary screen display? Until now, this is hard coded, yeah. And uh, we, we cannot, so it's not configurable or anything. Okay. Uh, does the solution offer standard integration content package to integrate with SAP CAR? I mean, that's what I already mentioned. No, there's no standard package available from SAP today. But um, in, in the end, we have open APIs on customer checkout side, on CAR side, and integrating that via cloud integration suite is, uh, let's say, not much effort. Yeah, and was done in, in really lots of customer projects. Uh, another question about the employee allowance card. So how can the employee allowance card uh, be up, uh, can be top up with money only via the customer checkout manager? No, it can also be um, top up with money with the um, point of sale system. So it behaves like an, an old, I would say old top up card. So you can just um, scan this card and then you are able to also upload money from the post system there. But it's also intended, of course, to have a job like putting every day um, a, a target amount on this gift card, both as possible. Okay, another question about gift cards. Can I connect the different gift cards variants with different article IDs to sell them directly in customer checkout? Very good question. It's also in the direction of having um, um, this central um, management, central configuration. Um, at least blends are existing there. Um, right now, we are not yet working on it, but um, let, you, let you surprise, maybe um, something will come in this direction in the future. At least we all thought about this and, um, and the basis, therefore, for having this feature available. Um, a question about reports. Is it possible to hide or deactivate reports? I think about no. sales reports. Martin, it is it is an application, so you can hide the complete application if you don't want to see the reports. But you, you cannot can hide individual reports. Individual That's what you reports mean. Not. Yeah, so I mean individual reports cannot be in, only the whole sales report. But I guess um, out of the 20 reports, um, the intention was to maybe show only five. So at least if I got the question right. Yeah. Uh, will it be possible to use the new features developed for gift cards also for coupons in the future? Um, I think it goes a little bit in this direction of rule and conditions because there's some um, improvements there. Um, right now, I think there are not no plans to to um, do this, Harald. Not, at least not in the near future. 
sometimes the person who asks can also develop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one question about the upcoming training. So if we also plan to have a developer training? Um, until now, not. Um, but I mean, if you have requests, so first of all, let's see how many requests we have for consulting. If you have requests for development, then please just inform us, yeah, and then we can think about it. But our intention was to first have only a development uh, consulting training. Mm -hmm. Okay, one uh, question uh, also about the gift card scan. So one of our customer of our uh, customers' need is to secure this gift card scan by setting rules like the like for example ten characters maximum only numbers. Will that be possible in the future? Um, I think right now the only way you have is to use a manual ID and um, sell the gift card. But when you sell the gift card on the POS system, you can scan the ID and then, but there must be like a card that's already pre-printed and you just take this gift card number out of the box. It's right now not possible. And also there, at least in the near future, no plans, but it would be worse to make um, um, a ticket for um, things that we could develop. Maybe it gets some... Um, plus points and then um, it's it's went higher. Okay, so a last question about promotion. So what about promoting promotion for retail, like buy one, take one, uh, like customer will buy one item, but the take one is different item. And is that supported now specifically for um, B1 as a backend system? Mm -hmm. Maybe because? Yeah. Uh, no, we do not support uh, buy article, article A and get article B for free. We only support buy one or uh, buy two, get one free and the quantity. Yeah? So we support this together with business one integration, but buying an article A and getting B for free is not supported with uh, business one. And I was not even sure if this is supported even in business one. So to my knowledge from maybe a bit outdated, this was also not supported in business one, at least in the past. Yeah? And we also don't support it. But again, partners can develop plugin, promotion plugin to achieve such use cases. And many have done that. And I mean, that's very important to confuse nobody. So it's not working out of the box with B1 and it's also not working out of the box with S4. But SAP has a product called OPPS, Omnichannel Promotion Pricing as a Service. And this product is exactly intended to, um, to achieve such use cases. This can be integrated with SAP Customer Checkout and was already done by several uh, partners and, and is uh, productive in several projects. And of course, this can be done, yeah? but not out of the box. Okay, another question about the training. So is there any planning for having trainings in Germany for next year? Maybe, uh, do we know already something? So, mm -hmm. To be honest, um, not, but the chances are high. I mean, now we are doing Dubai, so and then probably uh, one will be in Waldorf in 2025, but no concrete plan. Because do you want, to add something? Or? No, just that you can imagine also things will be linked to a little bit the cloud. If we have a cloud version somewhere, then we will also do a training to ramp you up on the cloud topics. Yeah, webinar training. So let's finish Dubai first and then we target. Step by step. Okay, and uh, now one last question about integration. So will there be one integration be moved to customer checkout manager like the S, uh, S for HANA? <laughs> Shall I answer it? So uh, <laughs> until now, we don't have a concrete plan to do that. Um, uh, but there's a partner, a solution partner outside, um, which offers such a solution. I mean, he solved this problem. Yeah. And um, yeah, so you can reach out to him and, and align with him. And um, yeah, but from our side in the call, we, we have currently no concrete plans to do that. Okay, let's take the last question. Um, how about receipt? Is there any plans to make editing or receipt layout much easier, like uh, uh, ISE? What you see is what, what you see is what you get. Um, maybe I take this question. I know that our print templates are kind of um, hard to come into the topic. 
I would uh, tell so. So um, if there in so so if if we would see a benefit of changing maybe the print template format when you go to the cloud because you get rid of some um, file system restriction, then I would say yes. Otherwise, I would say we would stay on on the print templates that we have right now. So it's at least not worse to come into the um, um, way how to change them. Um, it's if you if you are in for I don't know take take two three hours um, to to get started. I think then it's also possible without what you see is what you get it into to work on it. But, but to make it very short, it's not in our short term. Not plan. in our short term yeah. plan. So yeah. you can probably it is already in our customer influence. I don't know, but if not, you can edit there and probably hundreds will vote for it. And then we will rethink. But currently, you know, we are also handling priorities. If when you have 850 customers, you get requests from each and everywhere, and we have to prioritize. And as Martin said, you can handle it. We know it's not easy, but um, yeah, it's achievable. And that's why we focus on currently on other things. It's also something where partners can can um, sell their services with. It's also this um, this way, um, yeah. You said, I think. Yeah, that's it with the questions. So, yeah, let me say again, big thank you for everybody joining and apologize that we uh, run a bit over time. Um, probably next time we have to block one and a half hour or we have to accelerate, I don't know. Um, we develop less features, I think yeah. that's not in the interest of the people. Yeah. And yeah, thanks. And thanks. it would be really great to see you in Dubai. And very important, just because it's in Dubai, it does not mean that you cannot come. Yeah. So um, not only people who live in this region can come, of course, all the people from Germany, from France, Italy, US, globally. wherever they are, India. We're a global event. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks.